Hi, my name is Sumesh Balakrishnan from the product management team. Welcome to the session about Upgrade to Enterprise Manager 24 Benefits, Features and Best Practices. Our agenda for today's session will focus on Enterprise Manager release model and support timelines. Next, we will review why you should upgrade to Enterprise Manager 24.1. We will get into the details of upgrade strategy, planning and best practices. Finally, we will review the agent upgrade process using Gold Image. Let's review the Enterprise Manager release model and support timelines. Over the years, we have released multiple versions of Enterprise Manager. Each version has introduced new features and improvements to meet the evolving needs of our users and the latest version is Enterprise Manager 24.1 and we are very excited about the new features and the enhancements in the new release. Now let's discuss the support timeline for Enterprise Manager. It's important to understand which versions are currently supported and the duration of the support. And here Enterprise Manager 13.5 is under long term support and it is supported until the end of December 2026 with waived extended support fees. Also, the new version of Enterprise Manager 24 will be in premier support till the end of December 2027 and post that it will be in extended support. So as a product manager for Oracle Enterprise Manager, one question I often asked is why I should upgrade to the latest version? Well, the Enterprise Manager 24.1 brings in a lot of new features and enhancements to meet the evolving needs of our users. The architectural enhancements introduced in Enterprise Manager 24.1 enables a highly available, scalable and performant environment. The new release also introduces new services such as zero downtime monitoring service and job service for operational continuity. Also we have new highly available remote agents enable remote monitoring and management of targets. The new release also introduces the new generative AI Ask EM where you can interact using natural language to make informed decisions when investigating performance and availability issues. One of the other often question asked is what are the good upgrade strategies? What is the expected downtime for the upgrade? How can it be reduced? So we will review all this in detail. Here we'll provide you with the steps and key insights to navigate the upgrade process smoothly, minimizing downtime and optimize performance in your environment. Let's review them in detail. The upgrade process consists of four main steps. The first one is about the Puma assistance where you can engage and collaborate with our experts. Second is prepare for upgrade where you execute the health checks. The third is related to upgrading your OMS and agent where you start from a de uh, test development and then you move to non-prod and then finally to your production environment. And the last task is to perform the post upgrade actions. So let's look into the Puma assistant where you can engage and collaborate with our experts. So for assisting customers with upgrades and migration, we have this proactive upgrade and migration assistant program where our experienced engineers will help in planning and execution of upgrades. So they will assist you throughout the upgrade process as well as the post upgrade uh, phase. So you can contact your customer service manager to enroll into this Puma program for your 24.1 upgrades. Preparing for the upgrade is an important step in the entire upgrade process, so let's review them. Before starting the upgrade, first verify the supportability of Oracle database version and OS version certified for Enterprise Manager 24.1. Some of the important things to call out here are Oracle database 19c with RU22 or higher is supported as the repository database. Also. In 24.1, we have dropped Solaris x64 platform. So if your current enterprise manager is running on Solaris x64, 
ensure that you migrate to a supported platform before you plan for the upgrade. Also, we in 13.5, we added support for cross-platform repository migration. So if you're planning to do a repository migration from AX to Linux, you can follow the documentation to migrate the repository and then you can plan for the upgrade. And also you can always check the MOS node for the migration process. Here we will review the upgrade paths supported to Enterprise Manager 24.1. It's important to understand the supported upgrade paths as part of your upgrade planning. If you're running on 13.5, you have a direct upgrade path to 24.1. But if you're running a version less than 13.5, then it's a multi-step upgrade process as shown in the diagram. Executing health checks on repository database and OMS before upgrade is an important step in the upgrade process. So let's review these checks. Before starting upgrade, it is recommended to execute the EM prerequisite utility either in OUA mode or silent mode to check the health of the repository and OMS and ensure that the prereq checks are clean and that there are no failures before executing the next step or before moving on with the upgrade process. So the installer will show the execution results and if any checks are auto fixable, then those will be listed to fix it automatically without any manual efforts. The prereq utility also provides a health check report in an HTML file for you to get the detailed view of the prereqs that got executed as part, part of this uh, prereq utility. So you can just invoke it using this uh, command with em prereq equal true and then it runs the checks and then it gives, gives you the results. In the, uh, in the prereq checks, we also do the OMS system prereq check and reports the execution results. So if there are any system prereqs with warning, then you can take an action to review and fix it before moving on to the next step. Also, if a repository database is configured with advanced security options such as one-way SSL or two-way SSL, then you can provide the crypto, crypto details for us to securely connect to the repository database to execute the uh, checks. So in Enterprise Manager 24.1, we have added new support to execute the EM prerequisite utility by using either sys user or non sys user. The non sys user for lifecycle operations we have introduced in 13.5 release updates. The same we have extended to support in the EM prerequisite utility to perform the health checks during a 24.1 upgrade. So the default user is sys. And using this, you can execute the health checks on repository database. However, if, if sys account is logged in your enterprise and if you would like to avoid using sys for executing the prereq, then you can select the non-sys option. So as shown in the screen on the right hand side, you can select the execute prereq checks using non-sys user. And you can provide the database username. So here the database username for the non sys user should always start with sysman underscore and you can give your preferred username. So in this example, you can see I've given the username as sysman underscore LCM admin and I've provided the password. And then once you click on execute, the installer will create this non sys user in the repository and this user will be used to execute the prerequisite checks. So here we talk about the repository object actualization. So in your 13.5 for applying release updates, if you have used the rapid platform update to patch the OMS, then over the, over the time we would have created multiple editions in the repository. So all these additional objects such as PL SQL uh, packages, views, etc., are distributed over different editions. So the objects need to be actualized in the latest edition. And the repository object actualization takes time to complete, but it does not really impact the running OA, uh, uh, enterprise manager. So it is recommended that you run the EM prerequisite utility 
before the upgrade so that if the additions are present in the repository database, the EM prerequisite kit will detect the uh, additions and then it will run the actualization. So the actualization you can perform using the OUA method as well as you can do it through the installer. This is a, a new thing that we have introduced in 24.1 to make the upgrade faster. Otherwise, if you don't do the actualization as part of VM prerequisite, we also detect in the upgrade phase and we run the actualization during that time. So let's review some of the best practices for upgrade. Following out the best practices uh, listed here, the important things to watch out for is you should always refer to the uh, MOS checklist note, the upgrade checklist note that we have created to uh, review the known issues as well as some of the uh, best practices that we have updated for you to perform a successful upgrade to Enterprise Manager 24.1. Also, if you are planning to upgrade from 13.5 to 24.1, ensure that the current 13.5 environment is patched with minimum RU2 or later, RU22 or, uh, or later, otherwise the upgrade will be blocked. So it's recommended that you put the latest release update on top of 13.5 or at least have a minimum RU22 to do an upgrade to 24.1. Also, with every new release, we obsolete few plugins. So these are the list of obsoleted plugins that we have obsoleted in 24.1. So ensure that you undeploy these obsolete plugins from OMS and Agent before you plan for the upgrade. Also, if you have additional plugins that you have, that you have already deployed in your current 13.5 environment, Ensure that you download the compatible plugin and stage it and pass it to the installer so that these compatible plugin gets picked up and those plugins get upgraded as part of your upgrade process. So continuing with the best practice, if there are any older agents in your environment such as 13.3 or 13.4, then during the upgrade we block the uh, upgrade. So ensure that there are no older agents in the system. If you still have older agents, ensure that you bring that or you upgrade that to 13.5 and then you can plan for the uh, upgrade to 24.1. Also in 24.1, from the security perspective, we have hardened the uh, TLS communication. So 24.1 OMS only supports TLS 1.2. So if there are any older 13.5 agents which are still configured with TLS 1.1, then post upgrade, those agents will not be able to communicate with the 24.1 OMS. So ensure that the 13.5 agents are configured with TLS 1.2 so that post upgrade, the communication is not broken and your older agents can still communicate with the 24.1 OMS. And the other thing related to the uh, SSO. So if you have configured SSO solution using Oracle Access Manager, then it is not supported in 24.1. So what you need to do is you need to convert the Oracle Access Manager SSO to SAML based SSO, and then you can proceed with the upgrade. So here are the reference MOS node that you can ref that you can reference for the exact steps on how to convert it. And also I talked about the repository object actualization. So if you have not done the actualization as part of the EM prerequisite utility, then the upgrade will automatically detect and it will run the actualization as part of the upgrade. So one easy way to reduce the downtime while doing the upgrade is to perform software only upgrade and apply the latest release update in a bit only mode and then you can shut down the existing OMS for upgrade. This approach will not completely eliminate the downtime, but it reduces by a greater extent. The best practice to reduce the downtime during upgrade is to select the upgrade software only with plugins and configure later option as you see on the left side of the screen where I have highlighted in the installer. Also in 24.1 upgrade flow along with the OMS upgrade, we are also upgrading the central agent that is monitoring the OMS through the installer itself. This is a, a new one in 24.1. So uh, along with your OMS upgrade in 24.1, your central agent will also get upgraded so that post upgrade, you can 
you can plan to upgrade all your target agents. So as updated earlier, um, in the upgrade also we support the non-sys user-based upgrade. Like if you if you want to perform the upgrade using non-sys user, you can very well provide the database username and password. So like I said, the database user should always start with sysman underscore. So you provide the user and if the user does not exist, we create the user in the repository and we make use of that user to proceed with the upgrade. For example, if you have already created this non-sys user as part of the EM prerequisite utility, then we automatically detect that user and pre-populate that on the screen and we will use that user to perform the upgrade. So if you have already pre-created using the prerequisite utility, we pre-populate. If you have not created or if you have not used the non-sys user during the time, but during upgrade, if you want to use it, then you can provide a new username uh, which starts with sysman underscore and we will make use of that user to perform the upgrade. So uh, here you should uh, plan the upgrade strategy uh, to make sure you start with the uh, test development and then you move all the way to non-prod non and production environment. This will ensure that the overall upgrade completes without any issues and then the most critical first is the patching your environment with the uh, CPUs and also doing the performance monitoring and once the performance stability is there then you can very well review the new features that are there in this release and you can slowly adopt those new, new features. So now let's review some of the post upgrade activities. It's important to understand uh, that once the environment is upgraded the first thing is to apply the latest release update patch if, if it is available and next ensure that the configuration such as SSO, your custom certificates that were on the older environments are carried over to the new system and then um, since we do the out of place upgrade you can go and delete the old middleware home to reclaim uh, some space on the disk and also you can review the health of OMS and repository from our manage the manager page and after that, you can plan for rolling out your agent upgrades using Gold Image. So finally, let's review the agent upgrade using the Gold Image process. So uh, it, it, Gold Image is a, is a simplified process where you just need to select a source agent that is already a patched. Uh, source agent means here it refers to 24.1 agent. So you can pick a source agent and you can create a new version of, out of that source agent. And once you create a new version, then you can subscribe all your older 13.5 agents to this uh, gold image version. And then you can perform an update. An update, what it does is the job will go and upgrade all the agents from 13.5 to 24.1. And you can uh, run it at scale. If you have larger volume of agents, you can batch it. and you can plan for the upgrades uh, and then you can roll out the agent upgrades using the gold image process. So finally, um, on the uh, summary for 24.1 upgrade, it's very important to understand the support policy and your upgrade paths and preparing your system for an upgrade and understanding all the prerequisite checks will ensure you the upgrade uh, in a successful way and it will help you to transition to the new version with minimal downtime. Also, if you're leveraging the Puma program, you can experience better engagement, collaboration, and a painless upgrade. Also, the Enterprise Manager 24.1 upgrade process provides the guided and predictable upgrade for a stress-free tomorrow. Thanks for joining our session today. For more information about Enterprise Manager, check out our resources listed here. Thank you.